Rose Queen Levon Faith died this morning at 2.21 of massive head and neck injuries sustained during a performance at a local venue, Duke's Upstairs Lounge. Police report that the termite-infested stage collapsed under the weight of the singer and her piano, and both were sent crashing into a first-floor dry-cleaning establishment. Dr. Turner. As a result of the fall, Ms. Faith suffered a fractured dislocation of the fourth cervical vertebra and a severe closed head injury. We also believe she suffered a complete transection of the cervical spinal cord as a consequence of the fracture. Did she have any last words? Look out below. Uh, after the fall, Ms. Faith never regained consciousness. Uh, gentlemen, it's getting on 4 o'clock. Uh, is there anything else? Well, let's wrap it up. Frank Hollister, medical director of this fine institution, at your service. Now, I know autograph is out of the question, but I'd be mighty grateful if uh, you and I could just take a little photo together. Uh, okay. Oh, don't let that nigga lop now. Come on now. What the hell? It's all right, son. I'm a doctor. Ask me my name. Three million and seven. How you doing, Mr. Johnson? Swell, Dr. Turner. Remember Dr. Williams from clinic? And this is Dr. Weiss. They'll be assisting me today. Any questions before we get going? You a Jew? Uh, yes, I am. Any questions about your surgery, Mr. Johnson? Where is he from? Dr. Weiss grew up in the Palisades. Palisades? Nice to meet you. I'm a black man. <laughs> you allergic to any medication? No. What's this? I don't like needles. It's a sedative. I never had one before. It'll help you relax before your anesthesia. Why does he think I need to relax? We ain't all got hypertension. <laughs> I'm just teasing you, boy. I'm enjoying it. Ow! Oh. Anyone waiting we should talk to after the surgery, Mr. Johnson? Uh, wife, kids? No kids, and I ain't married. The last one ran off. Who? I just got woozy. That's the uh, sedative going to work, Mr. Johnson. In a minute, you'll feel like you're floating. Maybe Palisades Jew boys float, but son Charles Johnson don't float. Okay, go. We will see you in the operating room. Mm. Right. What up, big stuff? All right there, Weiss? Yeah, thinking about shaving my head so that my horns show. Clear up that Jew question once and for all. Johnson may be ignorant, Jeffrey, but more importantly, he's sick. Concentrate on that. Yeah, that's what I've been doing for the past 20 months. Although, I'll admit, it's generally not as overt as Mr. Johnson, but then again, it's generally not from the patients. Physicians talk to you that way? Oh, well, not directly to my face. The nurses don't hide their disdain, and the hospital staff don't move till I ask for something four times. It's going to be a frustrating place for everyone. Just have to take it in stride. Uh, was, I, was I drunk, thinking that an inner-city hospital would be grateful to have someone like me? Someone white? 
someone smart and talented and dedicated. As opposed to the rest of us. Wesley, I graduated AOA from Duke. I could have done my residency anywhere. But you chose here because it's most like the Peace Corps. Jeffrey, he's got a point. This hospital hasn't survived 60 years waiting for a great white hope. So I should tolerate you bidding because I want to care for the poor? No. no. You shouldn't expect people to kiss your ass either. You know, I talked to some friends at UCLA. I've been calling around. You looking for another position? Tentatively. Well, you think UCLA would have you doing a lap coley by now? I haven't exactly done one in Angels of Mercy either, except in the lab. Well, then how about today's your big day? All right. Wesley? I'm coming. I'll do the talking until he's asleep. It is all yours. But no hot dog. You're not sure of a move? Tell me. You ready? Absolutely. Where's the patient, Jim? You tell me, Ben. Dr. Turner? He's gone. Go gone where? I don't know. Did they put him in the hall? Five minutes ago, and now he's disappeared. Find him! Tough break. Take a seat and your number will be called. Man, two hours. <laughs> Man. This is Hattie Brewer. Been here before? Yes, ma'am. I got diabetes, and I've been treated for blood pressure. I was in four days ago, and again, day before yesterday. But I still got this pain in my back, and a bad pain from my, across my stomach from here to here. Doctor, give me some medicine, but it didn't do no mm -hmm. good. Take a seat, and your number will be called. How long might that be? You bet it's about a good long book for anybody going to see you. Because it's an hour bus ride, and I got two little ones. Coming home from school, I ought to be there for. Your number will be called as soon as the doctor can see you. <sighs> Listen up, baby. Like, I got, I, got, I got fever. I got aching. I got chills. I mean, I've been over here for over, over like four hours waiting to see a doctor so I can get to my work on time, which I cannot forget that. Now, all I hear from you is take a seat to somebody call your number. Well, I ain't got no number. I'm a man. I got a name, Antoine Lewis. And I want to know what do I got to do for somebody to see my sorry ass. That. <laughs> Step back, Mr. Lewis, and take a seat. You're blowing snot and germs all over my clipboard. I will not take a seat. I am sick. I want to see a doctor now. Oh, you will sit down. Or I'll call security and have them sit you down. Then I will personally see to it that every other person in this room gets their number called before you do. Excuse wait, wait, wait. me. Excuse me. What is your name? Eveline Walker, who's asking? Who's asking is Dr. Lillian Price, the new medical director of Angels of Mercy. And if you can't be doing your job any better than this, Miss Walker, maybe you ought to be looking for another line of employment. Right on, sister. Well, excuse me, Miss Medical Director, but I've been sitting here being sneezed at, coughed on, okay. and verbally abused since 7 o'clock this morning. Besides which, I got a union that protects me from Miss High and Mighty's like you, thinking you can just boss up in here and threaten my job. Miss <laughs> Walker, I promise you, if you don't get your act together fast, my first day on this job will be your last. All right. <laughs> Someone will see you shortly, Mr. Lewis. Thank you, ma'am. Mrs. Brewer, will you come with me, please? Have a seat right over here, okay? Excuse me. I'm new here. I'm Dr. Price. Who's the attending on uh, duty? Dr. Aguilar. Uh, could you find him for me, please? He's seen to Cora right now. Dr. Turner looks free. Dr. Turner? Lillian. It's great to see you again. Hello, Ben. So when'd you get in? This morning. 
I, I heard you were coming a few days ago, and I thought how great we could finally sit down. Ben, I have a woman talk. over here with a history of hypertension and diabetes complaining of persistent upper abdominal and back pain. Now, she's been seen twice in the last four days. No falls, no bruises, and she's not responding to medication. She needs a spiral CT of the abdomen right away, and Dr. Aguilar seems to be swamped. Fortunately, we don't have a spiral CT, Lillian. We have a lousy third-generation CT scanner, and we use that for emergencies. I'm concerned this woman might have an expanding aortic aneurysm. Does that qualify, doctor? Lillian, this is me. What's with the attitude? I'm not giving the attitude, Ben. I'm just concerned for the patient. If radiology can get me the results, Dad, I'd appreciate it. Jeffrey. Dr. Me. Aguilar will be right with you. Thank you, doctor. Patty Brewer, this is Dr. Benjamin Turner. He's our chief of surgery. Acting chief. How you feeling, ma'am? Not too good, Doctor. Uh, we're gonna try and find out why. I don't want to be no trouble. No, you're not. That's what we're here for. Uh, uh, this is Dr. Weiss. He's gonna take you down to radiology for a CT scan. That'll help us see what's causing your pain. And he will keep me fully apprised of your condition. Absolutely. Let me grab a wheelchair, Miss Brewer, and we'll get going. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Turner, on that matter we discussed earlier. Dr. Calder to labor and delivery. I thought you'd like to know. I think we found out what happened to your missing body. Missing body? Uh, Annette Peeler or our supervising nurse, William Price, our new medical director. Oh, well, how do you do, doctor? Fine, thanks. What do you mean, missing body? The patient comes in. It's Charles... Johnson. Charles Johnson. It's a simple gallbladder, except somewhere between the time I leave him in pre-op to scrub and the time I go to the OR, he disappears. I checked the records and found out there are two Charles Johnsons in the hospital. Your Johnson's in for his gallbladder. The other Johnson's in for a hemorrhoidectomy. Except Johnson with the hemorrhoid has an MI on the table before they get him anesthetized. They try to resuscitate him, but he dies. So they ship him down to the morgue. In the meantime, Johnson with the gallbladder is moved from pre-op into the hallway outside the OR. And with the pre-op meds they put into him, he's sleeping like a baby. Best I can figure, one of the nurses, we don't know who, sees Johnson in the hall. Gallbladder Johnson. Right. Gallbladder Johnson in the hall, mistakes him for the deceased hemorrhoid Johnson, ships him to the morgue. Do we know this? We guess this. Let me get down there before this guy either wakes up in a drawer or has an autopsy. Welcome to Angels of Mercy, Dr. Price. Does this sort of thing happen a lot? Depends how you characterize a lot. The county will pay to cremate your husband, but no kind of burial. You gotta pay for that yourself. First step, ma'am, you gotta Excuse come me. down here and sign You got someone here named Charles Johnson? Yeah, this is one of them. Other one come alive. I need to crap my jumpsuit. Where's the Charles Johnson that came alive? Yo. Connie had him picked up. Con excuse Bye. me, Connie? Where's the Charles Johnson you had picked up, the one that's alive? Oh, I sent him to surgery. The charge said he was supposed to go to surgery. So you sent him to surgery to me, Dr. Turner? No, it was something Japanese, like Wu, something Wu. Chinese, Dr. Lu. Why did you send him to Dr. Lu? Because the chart said he was supposed to go to surgery with Dr. Lu. That Charles Johnson, give, give me the chart. Johnson. We mixed up the charts. This is the one for the Charles Johnson who's alive. You sent him to the surgery of the Charles Johnson who's dead. Well, it's not my fault he wasn't supposed to be here in the first place. Morg! Hold it, Henry. It's been a mix up. I hope so, Ben, because this ain't my guy. I just sent my nurse out to get you on the horn. Different Charles Johnson. Your Johnson had a massive MI before you got to the room this morning. My guy? He dead? On ice in the morgue. You got mixed up with my guy, supposed to have his gallbladder out. Did you start cutting? None to cut. I examined him, I sculpted him, no hemorrhoid, his ass clean as whistle. I said, what, this is a miracle? It's got to be totally crazy. Part for the course today. Guess we should wake him up. Guess so. Now, wait, wait, wait a second, Henry. He's here, he's out. We got a wall. Bring in the laparoscope from room three, flatten the table. Right away, doctor. Turn him over. Henry? Assist me? Sure, I haven't done gallbladder in a long time. It's like riding a bike. Let's go scrub. Let's go. 
I hope the abruptness of my hiring doesn't get us off on the wrong foot. As CEO of Angels of Mercy, I like to know what's happening in my hospital before it happens, Doctor. Have you met your colleagues yet? Not all of them, but I'm hoping to before the day is out. Very good, very good. <laughs> hey, Charlie, had any fun today? Yes, sir, Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris, I was thinking I could pick your brain about Angels of Mercy. Get a heads up on how to proceed with my agenda. Your agenda, which is what? Baby? To put this hospital in shape to pass accreditation. Wow, we share the same agenda then. Oh, that's great, Mr. Harris, because I'm going to need all the help I can get. I'm at your service, Doctor. I like to think of us as a team, Miss Inside and Mr. Outside. In fact, I may use that when I speak to the Board of Supervisors this afternoon. Mr. Harris, I was hoping we could get together this afternoon. And patience won't serve your agenda, Doctor. No, no, you don't turn a ship on a dime. Get acclimated, meet your colleagues, acquaint yourself with the nuts and bolts of how this great hospital works. Then we can sit down and attack that agenda of yours together. She single-handedly saved Oakland Memorial from closing. Dr. Price is well known, well known in the medical community as a, an accreditation gunslinger, as it were. And, and the chairman felt, and I concurred, of course, that this was the ideal individual needed to ensure that Angels of Mercy passes accreditation. Last week, Mr. Nunez wrote about your medical director leaving under mysterious circumstances. This week, he says you sidestepped all normal search procedures and just appointed Hollister's replacement. I don't read Mr. Nunez's articles, Supervisor Guerrero, but this appointment was encouraged by your own Chairman O'Malley. What gives our own Chairman O'Malley the authority to circumvent the will of this body when nobody else can? Mr. Chairman O'Malley! I demand the right to vociferate. You may address the board if you sign in, Mr. Brody. I'll be the rules. I protect I'll them. say that the chairman's overstepping his bounds, making appointments in an effort Prostate. to thwart the majority of this board from coming to the conclusion that if he can't run this hospital, why should we give him another this one? This hospital is in the toilet! Quiet, Mr. Brody. Please be quiet. And you're saying that uh, voting down a replacement of... Uh, the facility for Angels of Mercy won't free up enough funding for your health care concerns? Uh, no, what I'm saying, I was voted to this office to serve the people. And does that include black people too, sir? This is the last nail in the coffin, Ed. The community needs that hospital! There's been scandal after scandal at Angels of Mercy, and its management no longer inspires the confidence needed to vote a $1 billion replacement facility. Generally, I don't agree with Supervisor Guerrero, but in this case, I'll make an exception. No argument here. Y'all are crazy! If we we're voting today, Ed, it'd be three to two again. We're not voting today. We vote next month. TB, HIV. Sit down, Mr. Brody. Ron Harris. The CEO of Angels of Mercy is a busted my lead. That's it. Get him out of here. Mr. Chairman, O'Malley, you can stop or ask my ass, lay my hand on my underpass, but I have the God-given right to stand it like a man. You're out of here, Mr. Brody. I stand convicted. Uh-huh. I stand defected. I stand buck naked. Recess. Twice. Hello, Mrs. Brewer. Dr. Price. How are you feeling? All right, I guess. I was just explaining to Mrs. Brewer that her CT scan confirmed that she has what's called an expanding abdominal aortic aneurysm. Oh. Sounds important. It is. Um, basically, there's a tear in the main artery from your heart, and it's leaking. We need to operate on you as soon as we can locate the surgeon. Could I speak with Dr. Price a moment alone? Um, sure. I'll be over here. What is it, Mrs. Brewer? I can't have this surgery, Dr. Price. My daughter, Verlin, has been in jail for seven months because of drugs, with five more to go. Till she comes out, I'm all her children's got. Mrs. Brewer, you don't have five months. You don't have five days. If we don't repair this fast, it'll rupture. 
kill you. All I can do is trust in God to hold me safe till my daughter comes up. Isn't there anyone that can take care of the children until you've recovered? No, ma'am. What about children's services? First time Verlaine was arrested. They was put in different foster facilities. There was inappropriate behavior with the little girl. I promised them they never have to go back. But if you die because you won't have this operation, then surely they'll be back. Where's the sense in that? All I can do is trust God, Dr. Price. And you? Mrs. Brewer, other than referring this to social services, there is nothing I can do. It's outside of the scope of my duties. I understand if you can't help me. Dr. Price, this hospital has been rocked by scandals, wrongful death suits, conflicts over staffing, and rumors of administrative misconduct, the most recent example being your predecessor, who was summarily fired for being drunk and disorderly the night that Levon Faith was admitted. That's an ugly and unfounded rumor that we won't dignify with a response. The question being, Dr. Price, are you sure you know what you're getting yourself into? I do, and I'm looking forward to the challenge. This is a great hospital in a great city, and with Mr. Harris's and Mr. O'Malley's help, we're going to make it even greater. Indeed, indeed. Indeed, so, Mr. Harris, we can read that that smile on your face has an indication that you found the body you lost this morning. What body? Well, apparently, you lost the patient who was about to be operated on. You haven't found him yet? Excuse me. In fact, he was never lost. It was a simple clerical mix-up. The patient had a completely successful and uneventful surgery from which he's recovering quite nicely. Ed, in light of this morning's contentious board meeting, how will you get the vote you need for a new hospital? This grand old building behind me is over 60 years old. It's weathered and earthquakes, budget cuts, tenfold increase in walk-in care. If we want to continue to serve the medical needs of this community into the 21st century, it's imperative the board members come around and vote a new hospital, which I believe they will. Or else we'll dig up a skeleton and make it. <laughs> Digging up uh, skeletons is your job, Mr. Nunez. <laughs> <laughs> Nunez has a spy in the hospital, probably a few of them. You might want to root them out. Okay. And keep your eye out for Ron Harris. He's like an old alligator. He looks like he's sleeping. But you get too close, he'll take your leg off. All in all, this is a great job out there today. Thank you. Mr. O'Malley. Ed, please, Ed. Everyone calls me Ed. Ed. I have a situation. Uh, there's a woman named Berlin Brewer doing a year at county jail on drug-related offenses, and I need to get her out today. Well, that's a hell of a favor. Why? Well, her mother won't consent to life-saving surgery because she doesn't want to see the grandchildren put back into foster care. And if this old woman dies because I couldn't get her to sign a consent form, those reporters are going to feast on it, hmm. which I don't think you want three weeks before the board votes on your new hospital. What I want, doctor, is for you to do what I hired you to do. Overhaul this hospital, get it accredited. You promised me whatever help I needed is. If you're going to turn me down the first time I come to you for a favor, maybe I ought to be rethinking this entire deal. Nice shoes, Dolce Gabbana. Manolo Blahnik. Expensive. I like good shoes. Me too. May I have one? Are you serious? Look at me. When you make a deal with the devil, you've got to deal with the devil. I'll do you this one favor, Lillian, but you strike me as a practical girl, so from here on, let's keep our priorities straight, shall we? How you doing, Mr. Johnson? Oh, boy. 
Where am I? You are in the recovery room. You had your surgery, and it was perfectly successful. Those were some drugs, doctor. Really? Last thing I remember was this big old nurse stick me in the butt. <laughs> Good. That's the way it's supposed to be. And oh, Lord, did I have some crazy dreams. Hmm. First, someone was driving me down a long tunnel. And in a dream, I woke up in a small, dark room. And it was freezing cold. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. And something happened I consider very symbolic. Uh, what's that? Someone somehow kicked me in my ass. And that kick in the ass said to me, Chuck, you've got to live better. Be a better man, eat better food, smell the roses, drink the wine. And with the gallbladder out, <laughs> man, I can do all those things. That, that's exactly right. Uh, Doc, am, am I going to be sedated again? No. No, you're done. Huh. That's too bad. Because it really changed my life. Hello, Mrs. Flora. Dr. Price. If I told you I was getting your daughter released from jail today, would you consent to the surgery? I worry about her looking to the drugs again. But anything that will keep those kids at home is better than social services. Is that a yes? Yes, ma'am. All right, then. And I took the liberty to have your grandchildren picked up and brought here so you can see them before you have your surgery. Here she is. Hi, children. Hi, Grandma. How you doing? How was school today? OK. Grandma, mm -hmm. you sick? Yes, honey. Grandma's got to have an operation. Are you going to die? Oh, Lord, no. I'll be home before you know it. What's going to happen to us? This nice lady is going to see that your mama comes home and takes care of you. Ain't that right? Absolutely. We're working on it right now. So you babies, go with Dr. Price and mind her till your mama comes. You hear me? Yes, ma'am. I'm scared. Don't be scared. God won't let nothing bad happen to me. The epigastric and umbilical incisions were closed using zero Vicro on the fascia. And all skin incisions were closed in a running subcuticular Can fashion. Can I talk to you for a minute? Period. I must be crazy. Why is that? I mean, I'm wondering just what the hell kind of hospital I've come to. <gasps> Patty Brewer won't sign her surgical consent because there's no one else to take care of their grandkids, and she doesn't want them back in foster care. So I point out to her, if she doesn't have the surgery, she's going to die, and then what does she think is going to happen to those kids? And she just looks at me and says, I'm going to trust in God and you to do the right thing. And now I twist Ed O'Malley's arm to release the junkie daughter from jail. And he very reluctantly says, OK. And I finally get Hattie Brewer to sign the consent. And now, after all of that, I don't have a surgeon. Who's on the call? Dan uh, Prince, who it turns out is in North Carolina and apparently didn't sign out to anyone. What about Ken Yardley? No one knows where he is. And he's not returning his page. Beautiful. Let me make some phone calls and uh, see who's out there. I'll get back to you. Nurse Peeler. 
Bill me in. Patients had a bruise, she dropped her blood pressure, abdomen was distended, and she lost consciousness. When did this happen? 20 minutes ago. Why wasn't I called then? I suggested it, doctor, but the resident said he got no response from a patient. The vascular surgeon thought he should start right away. Who's the resident? Dr. Weiss and Dr. Williams stepped in to assist. When did Dr. Williams step in? 10 minutes ago. What's the blood loss? Three or four units so far. Blood available? Six units, we called for two. One of the other four and tell the blood bank to keep six ahead of us. Talk to me, Jeffrey. Uh, I'm using hand compression on her aorta, but she's got a belly full of blood and she's still bleeding. It blew wide open. Gotta get a clamp at the diaphragm. Swing around to the other side. Swing around. I don't know what you're gonna clamp her with because there were no vascular instruments in the lap pack and the damn suction's clogged. Did you ask for a lap pack and a vascular pack? No, just a lap pack. Ask for what I thought I was gonna need. Give me a car more clamp. Get a vascular set open. This console tip clogs too easy. Change it to a pull suck and let's have two of them. Keep your eyes in the field, Wesley. Hold that. Jeffrey, I need you to retract too. Jeffrey, now! Then the VP's down to 60 with PVCs and runs a VTEC. Okay, try some lidocaine, hit her hard with volume. Patty Brewer stabilized. She looks okay. Why didn't you call me if she dropped her pressure, Jeffrey? I um, paged the vascular surgeon, but there wasn't any response. What's the procedure if you don't get the specialist you need? Um, go to the next most qualified person. How but... is that you, Jeffrey? Dr. Turner, if I hadn't gotten that woman into surgery when I did, she'd be dead. She'd be dead if I was 30 seconds further away. I don't think it's fair to imply that I was negligent or irresponsible. In spite of the fact that you were nearly both. Dr. Hey. At this hospital. A resident does not start surgery before calling and attending. Even if it's a life-threatening emergency? Especially if it's a life-threatening emergency. I'll count my own failings in this, Jeffrey. I entrusted you with that woman's care, and as the attending, I'll answer for it. But that even now you are totally unwilling to admit you made a mistake is a hell of a lot more disturbing than the mistake itself. I should have called you earlier. It won't happen again. It better not. And you got nothing to nod your head about, Dr. Williams. If that woman died, I'd have held you as responsible as Weiss. Excuse me, sir. What did I have to do with this? You know emergency procedure? I know to call the attending. Then why didn't you? She was Weiss's patient, and I got there after he'd started. So you stand on the shore and watch him drown, dragging that woman down with him? All due respect, Dr. Turner, it wasn't me. Built him up thinking today was his uh, big day to do surgery. So this is about Wesley Williams showing Jeffrey Weiss he's not as big ass of a deal as he thinks he is. He doesn't need me for that. Uh, then this is Wesley Williams showing Ben Turner. Should have been him on the right side with Mr. Johnson. I'll say this. I think you'd have a tougher choice between us if he was black. <laughs> you're saying I picked him to do surgery today because he's white? Maybe you're showing him. You're not like some others around here who make him out to be a stupid-ass white boy, which he is. Maybe I'm showing you you're not the doctor you think you are yet. Yeah. That's it. Now, why you listen to me? If what I saw today was about a young doctor who cares more about hurting a colleague than saving a patient, I got no room for that at my hospital. You hear what I'm saying? My mama all right? She came through the surgery, but the next 24 hours are critical. What am I doing here, then? They don't normally let prisoners go visit when their mamas get sick. This isn't about you, Verlin. It's about your children. <laughs> You're a social worker. I'm the medical director here, and I'm concerned about what's going to happen with Mabel and Rodney while your mother's recovering. Verlin, when you get 
out of jail. Are you prepared to stay straight and care for your kids? My mama care for them. And you don't feel any responsibility to contribute? Look, when I get out, I got things to do. I can't be tied up so as I can't go out amongst people, meet a husband, maybe even get them a father. Are you getting high in jail for Lynn? Hey, excuse me? <laughs> you trying to incriminate me? Is my mama really sick? You tell me. Mama? You're doing great, Mrs. Brewer. Everything's fine. Bless you. There now. You get on your knees to this woman for what she's done. You hear me? She's your angel. She gonna die? She's stable now. We won't know that for a few days. She better not die. <laughs> you know, those kids depend on her. Shouldn't those kids be dependent on you, Verlin? Well, I'm in lockup, all right, lady? You know, if you gave me any sense you care for your kids properly, I could get you parole today. Are you playing with me? Out of jail? But I'm not seeing it. If you're saying that I was out of jail, and really out, I would absolutely keep care of my kids. Really? I would work. I'd get a job. You know, I'd, I'd buy new clothes. i never been given an opportunity like that, Doctor. And I think if it were to happen, that I would rise up to it, you know, and take care of them like never before. What about staying clean? I would absolutely stay clean. And you pick your kids up from school and cook them dinner and stay in with them every night, right? That's exactly right. Because cause I know that if I messed up, they'd be back in that foster facility. And my little girl was messed with in that place. They need to be with their mother. Listen to me, Berlin. I think you tell me anything to get out of jail. And I also think you only do the right thing until one little thing breaks wrong and then you'll be right back on drugs blaming everybody else but your own sorry self. You know, if you think that, then why are you doing all this for me? I ain't doing it for you. I'm doing it because I promised your mama that I see to it that your kids don't go back to foster care. And all I'm hoping is that you can stay clean long enough for her to get home and take care of them, which, frankly, I got my doubts you can do. I'm going to make you wrong on that. You'll see. You better hope to, girl. Because if you don't, I will violate your parole and have your ass back in lockup for a good long time. Can I come in? Sure. How'd it turn out with those kids? I just sent them home with their mother. Mm, that's good. She swears she's gonna do right by her children this time. I'm not holding my breath. <sighs> so, one day in the bank. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Don't go telling me how I feel, Ben. That was Northern California. This is Southern California. Okay. Just that's not my experience of this hospital when I walk out at the end of the day. Really? What's your experience? At nights I go home after being here 72 hours straight. Have a couple of beers, look myself in the mirror and say, no more, I quit. Private practice, baby. Lake of tickets, get a life. Come the next morning, I'm right back in here. Getting my brains beat out. To be honest with you, I showed up this morning with an agenda to get this hospital back on its feet and turned around so we could get accredited. Before I know what the hell's happening, this place grabs me by the scruff of my neck, flips me upside down, and turns me <laughs> sideways. 
What's up with that? I don't know. Uh, maybe it's the water. Yeah, right. Anyway, um, I only came by to apologize for being such a bitch this morning. I thought after seven years I'd gotten over being left at the altar, but I guess I hadn't. I didn't exactly leave you at the altar, Lillian. Three days before the wedding? I was having second thoughts. I asked you to postpone, but you didn't want to hear about it. Look, <laughs> it was a long time ago. We've all moved on, all right? Yeah. Anyway. See you tomorrow? Let me walk you out. me back on my heels, too. I wasn't expecting it to hit me as hard as it did. We're gonna be able to work together? We can try. Good. That's good. Maybe together we can shake him up a little. Make this a proud place again. Your shoes. My feet were hurting me. 